Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome to your weekly dose of newsy infotainment. It's Let's Be Treasonable coming to you from the luxurious studios of Radio Titans in Los Angeles with your cognitive dissidents on the panel this week. Comedian, juggler of words and objects, and all-around good guy, Mr. Jim Coughlin in the studio. Yo, yo, yo. (laughs) (laughs) And there you hear the dulcet tones of the laughter of comedian, scholar, and the black voice of reason, Mr. Time and Ship. Uh, power to the people. It's good to be here with good old Jim and Dave again. <laughs> Always a pleasure to have you in the studio. And as Time and mentioned, I am Dr. David Robinson, your Vin Scully for the impending apocalypse. And oh, it seems like it's coming sooner every day, which I guess is how future events that you anticipate happen. They, they do get closer. Time. Crazy shit. Uh, We are also, as always, joined by our invisible panelist through the magic of pre-recorded sound and telephony. It is five-time Emmy nominee Will Durst with this week's Burst of Durst. Hey, guys. Will Durst here with a few choice words about the current state of the Democratic Party. And those words are, (laughs) it ain't pretty. Those of you with weak stomachs would best be advised to avert your eyes. And please, keep all children behind closed doors for the next couple of months. Because watching the Democrats is scarier than finding scorpions in your underwear. If their shenanigans were up on the big screen, it would qualify as a horror movie. Not even sure if the word party should apply here anymore. It certainly doesn't fit in terms of celebration. There's no frolicking or joviality. And if you mean party in terms of a gathering of like-minded individuals, that too leaves quite a bit to be desired. More like a loose collection of misfits who cluster together for the sole purpose of claiming not to like President Donald Trump. (laughs) And that's about it. They don't stand for anything. Not even the national anthem. You can't even accuse Democrats of being afraid of their own shadow because at this point they don't actually cast one. Besides, it's hard to see your shadow when your head's so far up your butt you can tickle your spleen with your elbow. Not only aren't they in the game, they don't even know that one is being played. The Republicans attack with torches and pitchforks, and the Democratic response is to introduce legislation to reform pitchfork safety standards. You should put corks in those. Phosphorescent for nighttime visibility. And if you insist on carrying torches, they need to be flame resistant, at least two inches long. Should come in for about 12 bucks a piece. I know a guy who can knock them out for six. For Let's Be Treasonable, I'm Will Durst. Well, thank you very much, Will Durst, with your discount pitchfork needs. Um, You know, I I think Will has a point and that uh, incompetence is definitely the one way that the two parties are the same. Because I know a lot of people like to argue, oh, they're both the same, which is generally a very, very false equivalency. But uh, in terms of incompetence, yeah, they are they are right up there. The only the only major difference in their incompetence is that the Republicans blend theirs with malice. So uh, we get wonderful policies like one that Trump announced this week uh, to eliminate any racial standards in college admissions, which on paper seems like a good idea. But as I have said on the show many times before, the the deal with um, equal opportunity and um God, sorry. It it's like a hundred degrees in Los Angeles. We're in a a hot non air conditioned studio, so my brain is baking uh, while we're, we're while we're box. doing the show. We are, but um, what affirmative is action. thank yes. you? Affirmative, affirmative action, action is what I'm trying to think of. <laughs> yes, it's one of those things that we shouldn't need, but we do. Yeah. Um, because of the way we, you know, everything has taken place over the last, oh, I don't know, how old is America? 220, 242 years. 242 years. If we, if we go by the July 4th. We can do that. I think it's, it's history. Um, but yeah, the, you know, on paper, it sounds good. There should be no racial, uh, component to college admissions. But when you look at how, the minorities have gotten the raw end of the deal for those 242 years. 
something needs to be in place to help these people. And yes, time. And I did say these people, <laughs> but we, we, need, you, you, we need you said the quite to, a bit. Yeah. Well, we need something to help minorities yeah. get even footing. And is, if they is, aren't getting it in the early portion of education, it needs to happen at the college level. So what happens is that your Trump supporters and your general conservatives actually think that it goes both ways and that in their view, um, Black people have an equal opportunity because in their mind, they're not racist. No. And, and so why do you need to give them all, this adva- all these advantages? Meanwhile, they could open their eyes and uh, look at stats, drive around. Um, there's no minority group other than Asians that is doing better than white people. Um, well, and you don't even have to look at stats or, or anything like that. Open a freaking newspaper and take a look at what's going on around us. Uh, just this week, you know, time in one of the one of those news stories you showed me this morning mm-hmm. uh, was about the the guy who did he call the cops on yeah. a black family yeah. that was call using the, the pool, uh, and they were allowed to use the pool. They, you know, it's like a neighborhood association thing. The woman yeah. like had her card, had everything. her card, her pool card. She had yeah. her ID with right. her address. Right. Uh, in Oregon this week, a a state representative who is African-American, goes by the name of Janelle Bynum. Mm -hmm. She was canvassing in her neighborhood amongst her constituents, and someone called the cops on her because there was a black woman going door to door. Right. Um, You know, you've got the, the president of the United States ignoring the fact that police are shooting unarmed black people at rates that outweigh Right. the the rates at which they're shooting unarmed white people. Right. And he insults NFL players who are protesting against this. So right. the problem is you, you get all these people on the right who, as Jim said, don't think they're racist, who fail to see that there is a problem <clears throat> that these solutions exist to at least mitigate. Well, I mean... When you when you talk about affirmative action, you know you we're always dealing with and with history, and most of the people who are representative of Republicans or whatever don't like to deal with history because they say, well, that stuff doesn't uh, you can't use it today. Look, what happened in history, whether it be Jim Crow or redlining or you know these different things that where you had to create laws like. Uh, affirmative action, they happened because there was not a fair shake, because there was not a level playing field, because people put, you know, were selling things because of fear. And everybody was involved. All of those that knew, and the people who were able to achieve were the people with the knowledge. Mm-hmm. Those that didn't have the knowledge got fucked. Those that with the knowledge and knew what was going on, the problem was when black people got the knowledge, they were still fucked because they were fucked because of the color of their skin, not because they, they weren't smart enough. And when every time, which one thing that, that, um, that the American public needs to understand, that every time blacks or Hispanics or anybody started to excel, they found a way, the powers that be found a way to destroy what they had created. Black Wall Street existed. It was burned to the ground. Cities in Oklahoma, Louisiana, Alabama, they burned them. Yep. Okay? Whenever there were jobs, Missouri, whenever there were jobs, Illinois, and whenever the blacks were flourishing, they sent the poor whites to say, look what they're doing. They're taking blah, blah, blah from you, and you create this. And that's where you sell the fear of, hey, man, they're taking your job. And, you know, you say, well, why do you need affirmative action? I wouldn't need affirmative action if you left things, if you just let me uh, achieve upon my America. Remember, everybody wants the same thing that the white man wants. We're assimilating just like the white man. But you won't allow me to live my life <clears throat> as everyone else, because you've created this thing of race. Racism was created, it was created to destroy. It was not to to distract, not to focus on what we can actually achieve. Because, you know, God knows, given the same opportunities, blacks would. 
I wouldn't need affirmative action. You wouldn't have to be. We wouldn't even be having this discussion. You know? But when you see people, you know, it, it, we're selling fear. Sure. You know, you've made the black man your, your issue. When you see guys brutally getting beaten, they still, they had lynchings. I mean, I'm, I'm, 50, I'm about to be 54 years old. The Civil Rights uh, Act was just signed 54 years ago. Yeah, I believe the last lynching was in the 80s. Yes. There was a, a final one, yeah. Okay, and you're, 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 so when you have these things going on, and, uh, and as you were talking about, people calling the police, the girl that went to Yale. She was at Yale University. She's hmm. a student. The woman called the cops on her because yeah. she fell asleep. She was yeah. studying, for God's sake. She wasn't stealing. And when you can do this at will, and I work in law enforcement, and I will tell you that the majority of the people that we lock up are young blacks and young Hispanics. No father in the home, okay? Whereas you, and and it's already, and, and a lot of this happened because of redlining. Because of the discrimination in our country that we've had, you, you, you sold us on this sold in land of the free, your land of liberty. But that was only what, 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 there, what, there's uh, a lot of fine print. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, <laughs> that, that, hey man, that's only for white folks. That wasn't for blacks, it wasn't for Hispanics. And now you call it a Hispanic, a, 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 an illegal immigrant, where you're still, especially in California and places like Texas, you're still saying, hey man, uh, La Cienega? Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, those are Hispanic names. You took this. You took this, okay? We And true, you beat them out. You, you took them because Andrew Jackson had already stated once they had you know, did, the, did the work, they said, we're going to take this shit. They had already plans on taking California. You know, it's weird. I, it's just listening to you talking about this, and I, I, I want to ask you guys uh, your thoughts on this because I'm, I'm thinking about exactly what you're saying and realizing that, I don't have a problem when I see dudes like driving in a car with a giant Mexican flag hanging out the window, even though they lost the battle, basically. Yeah. But I am deeply offended. And maybe it's because I'm Jewish. Maybe it's right. just because I'm American. But right. when I see someone flying a Confederate flag, right. which you don't see here in, in Los Angeles, uh, but it, that that bugs the fuck out of me. <laughs> it wouldn't bother me if you if you but, it, but you know, it wouldn't bother me. As much, but when you're running around still spewing the same racial stuff that came with that flag, right. then hey, I don't have a problem with anything, dude. I don't give a shit. Hey, I, I look, I'll talk to a a known Ku Klux Klan because I know you can't be born that way. Someone taught you that shit, and you wonder why people think the way they do. Like I used to always tell Ari when he was, well, I said the conversation that your father had with you was not the same conversation my father had with me. You know, my dad going to fight in World War II was not like your father, okay? And when he came home, he did not have the same benefits. And when he did get them, you know, they were immediately taken away or they were still trying to lynch black folks in their damn, in their uniform. Yeah, that, that, that is one of the most amazing things is reading about uh, black soldiers in the South right. being treated like dirt. Uh, forced to, you know, be in the, the, the worst cars, right. right, in the colored section. And meanwhile, German prisoners of war could be in the main car. Yes. And it's like, this kid, this German kid, maybe not evil, but he might have killed your son. Yes. But that black kid might have saved, the black man that you're forcing oh. to go back, might have saved your son's life. Um, there, was a, there was actually a, a thing, uh, there were black nurses that worked in uh, during World War II, yes, and they were only basically allowed to treat prisoners of war. Right. So they treated German prisoners of war, and there was a, one couple that fell in love, right. and uh, so this German prisoner of war and his his black wife ended up first in. Uh, they went back to Germany. And they ended up finding it was less racist in uh, New York. <laughs> <laughs> right. But anyway, so, I mean, anyway, it's just a, astounding. Right. And that's the part that I, that, that, you know, whenever I have these conversations, and I think this is the thing that is always, when people say we don't need this, and even when, when black people say it, that they don't need affirmative action and everything, I say, you don't understand. You have blood on your hands. Okay? Because we are standing on the shoulders of black people who fought for this country, who, 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 who fought for. 